Emily, hello. Hey. Hi. Happy Monday. How are you? It's a Monday. <laughs> good. Yes. How are you? <laughs> That's good. Yes, it is. I know. Uh, another week, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining me. Congrats, champ. Good to see you. Uh, Thank how, you. How's the day treated you so far? Uh, it's been good. Um, just getting back on track kind of after a fight that's kind of difficult so and you generally jump right back into training or taking it easy you know like the first couple of weeks afterward it depends it really depends this time i took some time normally i would have just jumped back in after a few days but i did take some time this time yeah i mean you got to enjoy the the great victory right so i mean how'd you celebrate did you do anything fancy special or just treated it as a another victory <laughs> I just kind of relaxed, which is what, I mean, honestly, was so nice. And then I, I took a trip to see my family, which was yeah. long overdue. So yeah, some donuts, I'm sure as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, I'm sure you've seen the picture uh, and, you know, a fantastic knockout, but there's that picture like right after you connected the kick. And I think it's one of the best pictures and, you know, goes right up there in MMA history because your donut tattoo is like being fed to her off the kick. Right. I mean, have you seen that? I like it. Yes, I've seen it. It's funny. I like it. Yeah, you should get that like put on the wall or something. That's a great shot. Framed or something. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, pretty good stuff there. But uh, yeah, you mentioned the family and I saw your post about your grandparents. So, I mean, how happy were they? It's a very cool story and interesting to see that, you know, they kind of helped you get into MMA, right? I mean, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, my grandma is like such a feisty woman. She's really something special. She really, really is. And so they both just watched fights when they were, you know, babysitting me growing up. And and my grandma's like total opposite of my mom. My mom's a nurse, very like, let's not get hurt or do anything like that. So when when they try to, you know, get me into Taekwondo, she was very reserved. My dad is just like, anything you want to do, do it. So my mom was kind of like the difficult one and, and I eventually got into it, went into wrestling, was like, mom, I'm moving to Oklahoma. And she was just like, what? And so I moved here, wrestled for a little bit. It wasn't really my thing and, and got into the gym, Giuliano, just the way he does everything is exactly how I am. Like so disciplined, so strict. It just was really exactly what I needed to get like myself together. And, and here we are. And, and my grandparents are just thrilled and I'm so glad that they could you know watch that and you know I wish that they could have gone but to watch it and to you know be able to bring the belt to them was just everything I could have ever hoped for yeah I'm sure and so where are you from originally I know you're in Oklahoma now but where, where are they I'm from California okay San Jose San Jose California and and my grandparents live in Utah so that's where I went to visit them Okay, very cool. Yeah, I got some family in Utah as well. Uh, do you remember like the fights that you would watch like back then? Was it, I mean, maybe around Ultimate Fighter times, but does anything stand out to you from, you know, when you were growing up? <laughs> My grandma loves your eye favor. Like, okay. she always like the California kid, the California kid. She just <laughs> loved him. And so, I, I mean, I love him too, but she just, I remember just, you know, I don't know what fight it was, but I remember when he broke both his hands, like we were watching that the Mike fight. Brown, the Mike Brown rematch. Yeah. And I remember that and I just remember it. I don't know why, but she just loves him. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, that's, that's kind of funny. They're really big fans then. I mean, you would think oh, yeah. that generally the more casuals around that time, I mean, paper was very big, but I wouldn't have expected, you know, <laughs> to be like, that's my guy. <laughs> so. Yeah. They, at the California kid, they were like, you got to go to that gym and train at his gym. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I like, and I actually, actually one of my fights in Oklahoma, he, he was here. Mm -hmm. um, it was like an XFN. I don't know if he was like doing the commentary or had a, a fighter, but he was here. So I've met him and it was cool. I was like, my grandma would love you. Right. I'm sure she's very jealous of that. <laughs> <laughs> so very cool stuff, Emily. But you know, as for the Danielle Taylor win, obviously fantastic. And I want to boost your ego a little bit because, you know, this win that you had over her, you're only the second person to knock her out. and just to put it out there, I, you knocked her out when the likes of former UFC champ Zhang Weili could not, former Invicta champ Jessica Penne could not, former World Series of Fighting champ and the number one ranked worldwide strawweight at the time, Jessica Aguilar, she could not, former Ryzen champ, so he, um, I could go on and on. You were the, you actually did it though. So, I mean, when you think about that kind of thing, and I just laid it out for you, but does it make the win all that like much greater? I mean, it's already a great win by itself, but when you look at 
who hasn't been able to do what you did to her? Right. I am thrilled about it, honestly. Um, I mean, I'm not out here trying to fight wheelie or anything right now, but <laughs> it is really cool because that's the level I want to be on, you know? So like her having fought those girls, which I watch all the girls fights, especially 115. So I'm very familiar with those girls. Um, it just, it reinforces and kind of gives me a little confidence. Like that is where I want to be. And that is where I'm so close to being, you know what I mean? Like that level is the highest level. And I know I'm like so close to getting there. And it just is really thrilling to be like, Hey, you know, you're, you're almost there. Like my last two fights were over UFC veterans. And that's just like a really great, you know, little boost for me. Yeah, definitely on a great role, obviously. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that, is it safe to say that you maybe wish you went to straw weight sooner in this case of course bellator had the opportunity which did not have the division but like how do you look back on that experience and now i mean you look reinvented at straw you know you're finishing everybody and it's like two different fighters a little bit yeah it's difficult for me my record is difficult um i've had some very very close fights and i've had some you know trouble dealing with that you know it's hard mentally like to lose such close fights like that and so um I don't wish that I had moved sooner because I do enjoy my time with Bellator. I feel like it was really important for me mentally and uh, to understand the game. Um, I was so young when I signed with them and, and I just did a lot of growing up in that time. So while it was difficult, I don't wish I had changed anything. I feel like everything is, is right on time. If that makes sense. Like I'm so annoyed with some of my fights, <laughs> the splits and stuff. I'm super annoyed with them, but at the end of the day, like, would I be where I am now? Like, so I, I'm a big believer in, you know, I am where I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to stick with that. But yeah, I mean, I am definitely some frustration with, with some of my fights. Yeah. I mean, it's a great point though, because it's a very big stage, you know, and I mean, you know, they're a major organization, all that, and getting to be on those stages that early, you know, kind of gets you ready for just as you continue to climb up. So, I mean, maybe a little bit less nerves as you've gone on since then. It really helped with that, I imagine. Yeah, I, um, like I said, Bellator made me grow up. So um, when I first started, I had this idea of like MMA and how it worked. And I was just like, oh, if you're good, you're going to end up, you know, at the highest level. And that's not entirely true. So, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into play. And I now know that. And so I feel like I'm really mature where I am right now. Like I'm in a really good spot mentally. Um, finally with my fights, you know, having the belt and everything, I'm in like this fantastic position. I feel, I feel really great. And so, um, I needed those lessons and I needed to learn how this world works. You know, I don't want to be like naive kind of walking around. And so, but I will say, um, kind of like what you said, a lot of girls get to the UFC and, and they haven't quite grown up. So, I feel like I have had those lessons now and not to say that I'll never, you know, get beat or anything, but it was a big, big help. And, and I've had to really go through those difficult fights and those difficult, you know, big stage lights on you. And so I feel like I will be ready, you know, when I get my chance. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the uh, split decisions and those kind of things being annoying, but I get a little bit annoyed for fighters, you know, kind of in your situation where, you know, early on, they kind of maybe had some losses and whatnot, but now you're doing, you know, fantastic. What it's, it's five and one or four and one in the last five, right? And a, obviously a champion now, but on paper, you know, the numbers don't look as, you know, sexy or whatever as they could. And, you know, people criticize you for that, which is stupid because we all know the sport's kind of a, what have you done for me lately type thing. So, I mean, for you and your position, <laughs> is that pretty annoying when people knock you just for the numbers and the record? Yeah, it's really annoying. And, and I also feel like, uh, I mean, tell me who hasn't lost or who hasn't lost two in a row. Or, I mean, even at the highest level, there are several people in the UFC right now that are on a two, three fight losing streak. And, and that doesn't mean that they're not going to come back and win the next four. So I feel like people are so quick to judge and, and, you know, I'm lucky. I didn't have a whole lot of, you know, rude people when I was losing in Bellator. Um, I don't really, I don't hop on it and kind of battle with them because I feel like that's a waste of time. So I feel like maybe that's why I don't get a whole lot of hate because they know I'm not going to come back and sit with them. Um, but I will say, you know, I've seen it. I've seen other fighters and I've seen people just attacking them. And it's super annoying. It makes no sense. And, and I just feel like people are, are really quick to hate on somebody who's lost a few times. And 
And then you'll see them come back and win like a bunch and then they'll forget, totally forget about it. And so people are just really, really <laughs> weird in this sport. Yes. Yes, they certainly are. I can attest to that as well. Um, but I mean, it's got to be great motivation at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, I try not to even, even participate in it, but yeah, I'm like, you know, it's, it's people, it's funny to me because I'm like, they really don't know what they're talking about. You know, like That's people the worst who, part. <laughs> who attack fighters. Yes. It's like, you really have no idea how any of this works. Yeah. It's uh it's a very interesting thing and I, it's going to be around probably forever, but you no, know, that's the yes. way it goes. So <laughs> it's got yes. to ignore it. I think that's the best way. Don't engage. Yeah. But right. um, yeah, Emily, you know, two of, you know, the biggest moments in your career, uh, the title fights before this one, you know, against Kanako and then uh, the Alimale, you had two fights with Alimale actually. But uh, I know that you said recently that, you know, the Kanako fight was kind of more heartbreaking for you or a little bit tougher of a loss. Um, and I'm just kind of curious, you know, what, what made that one stand out uh, as opposed to, you know, the, the Alima loss and, you know, both great opponents and uh, champions in their own right? Yeah, for me, uh, I just feel like I did everything right in the Kanako fight, which makes it, a, that, that's why it's done. Like, I know that there was nothing else I could have done to prepare better for the fight or to have done in the fight. Like, I gave everything and I feel like, I don't want to say, I don't like to say like I won, but I do feel like I showed really great skill set of myself and I'm really proud of myself for that fight. And, and to have had it be like such a close controversial split, you know, it's difficult. That was difficult for me rather than, you know, Lima finished me. So like, there's no question there. Like I know in that fight that, you know, it's just, it was a whole other thing. So like when, when I fought Kanaka, I just feel like I did everything and I still came up short and, and that just was like a, a little bit of a stab to the heart. And so, um, you know, I, I thankfully got, got back in it and got the win over Juliana after that. So, you know, I got right back into the win column, which is exactly what I needed to do. And, and I'm glad it worked out that way because, you know, it, it's a, with my record, it's, it's a difficult situation, you know, <laughs> for me to, to try to, you know, accomplish my goals later on in the future, you know, I need to stay on track. And so I'm glad I was able to get back on track. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, what are your thoughts on like the open scoring? Because I'm sure, I don't know, you have the option, right? Of if you want to know the rounds in Invicta, right? I mean, they, they tell the audience and everything, but just what are your thoughts on the open scoring? And was that something you thought about in that fight? Just general thoughts on that. Um, when I fought Kanako, it was not open. Scoring okay. That yet. was before. Okay. But, um, I don't pay attention to it. Honestly, I don't, I don't like ask my corner in between. Um, G will tell me if he feels like I need to know if I won or lost the round. He's definitely not going to sugarcoat it. If I lost, he'll say you lost the round. Um, but I don't really, my mental, like in the fight, I never am like wondering about the score. It's more about like the actual fight. So for me, <clears throat> doesn't really do a whole lot, but I'm sure for my corners, they enjoy knowing if I, you know, won that round or, or whatever. Um, I think it's cool, but I do think, you know, it's still the same judges that are judging fights. So, I mean, I think it's a cool step in the right direction, but we also need like more knowledgeable judges or judge training or something with the judges because we keep on seeing over and over, you know, problems. So I don't know what the solution is, but I mean, it's cool that they're trying new things, I guess, but I think that alone is not going to solve it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's where I think people get a little bit confused too. It's like, all we're doing is just letting everybody know. It doesn't mean they're being yeah. better. <laughs> it's like, yeah, right. it's maybe right. a little bit more of uh control or whatever you can do with your own actions maybe, but yeah, it's good to see them try and all that. So uh, it is nice. And hopefully I hope at least a couple other people started to do it, but uh, we'll see about right. that. Um, would you say that the Kanako fight was maybe your biggest learning moment or experience in your career? Or is there something else that stands out in that regard? Uh, as far as mentally, no, Bellator was like my biggest, you know, I really had to do a lot of soul searching after that, you know, three fight loss situation. Um, but as far as like skill set, I feel like I really put it together well in that fight. And so, I mean, I lost, but I feel, I felt amazing, really. Like I was sad, obviously afterwards, but I'm really glad with, with what I showed in that fight. And I feel like because of that, 
in my last few fights, I've, I've started to show more and more just because I'm, I was content with, with what I showed, if that makes sense. Like Mm -hmm. I was comfortable. And so each time I'm I'm getting more and more comfortable and more and more confident in the skills that I have uh, that have worked against such high level people. So, you know, it's a never ending growth for me in MMA, which, you know, I mean, that's the whole point, but like as a, as a person and as a fighter. And so I feel like if I can just show a little bit each fight, you know, I'm pretty content. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Showing up and showing out, that's for sure. Um, is there something specific that kind of changed for you when dropping back down to Strawway, joining Invicta, all this kind of thing that, you know, highlighted this change or development in, you know, such lethal striking? Because generally, you know, we might see more knockouts for the per- person going up, but you've gone down and now knocking out Janessa Brangin and then Daniel Taylor, like people that we don't see get knocked out typically, like I mentioned earlier, but uh, is there something specific you did to really hone in on, you know, this new element in your game? There were several aspects. I think that played into me finally performing like to my capability. Um, After Bellator, like I said, I had to do a lot of of soul searching um, because that was a difficult, difficult time in my career. Like, I mean, there was a lot, there was a lot going on and, and stuff, but I um, started seeing a sports psychologist and, and that is probably it. Um, that changed the game for me. She um, completely transformed my, my, my performance mentally. And so being able to drop back down to a weight class that I should, you know, should have been at the whole time um, where my best, where I feel my best physically. And then I was at my best mentally because I'm, I've been training my mind now, which I wasn't doing before. So it was the two coming together. Um, and then, like I said, just each performance, just me feeling more and more comfortable. I think that's what it is. And, and what I feel I'm not at my best self right now, but I know I'm on my way and I know I'm close. So I'm, I'm just like so excited to be where I am. Yeah. And I get the sense, you know, and I guess like pr- practically everyone I talk to about this, they all agree that MMA is more mental than physical. I'm assuming you're also <laughs> on that line of thought. Yeah, for sure. I do. Um, and then, I mean, also fighting for Invicta uh, really did, you know, was the third piece of that puzzle. I, I love Shannon and I love Invicta. I love what she's done with it. And I love the fact that she matches fights with fights and not have a list of princesses that she's trying to build up to send off. And I don't like to talk about this a whole lot because it's, it's MMA politics, but it's real. I mean, if you, if you know what you're talking about, you know, that's real. And you know that there's a lot of shows that do that. And Shannon doesn't do that. Uh, And I respect that. And I, I love her promotion and just the fact that you're going to, you're going to see good fights. That's why you see good fights. That's why everyone's talking about, Oh, and Victor always has a great card. Why? Because she puts people who should be matched together together. And I respect that and I respect her and, and that me being able to respect my promoter and know that she respects me was the third piece to that, you know, mental physical puzzle to where I feel like, you know, I'm really happy with them. And so that just, you know, it all plays, it all plays together and it, it all came together for me. Yeah. Can't go wrong when uh, the boss is a good boss. Right? So, right. so exactly. nice. Uh, Shannon is awesome. That is for sure. And uh, is it kind of cool and special for you to get to be a part of, you know, it's a little bit still of the beginning of the new era for Invicta, right? Moving over, leaving Fight Pass, all this th- stuff, uh, the new deals, looking to go big, have a bunch more shows. I mean, is this kind of cool for you to at least get to be a part of? Yeah, for sure. I am. Um, I was bummed that I couldn't be on that May card, that first wow the first card, but, um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. And I, I know, I mean, obviously Shannon is a smart woman, so I know that wherever she takes it, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take off. And so it's cool to be a part of it. And, um, you know, I always give my, I always give my best fights for Shannon. You know, I, I respect her. She respects me. So I just go out there and fight and, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Absolutely. And uh, with that in mind, though, I do know that you do have the goals of right, getting to the UFC or things things higher, right, as far as you can go. And, you know, I mentioned Whaley and all that already. But is that kind of, you know, where the focus remains is, all right, UFC, it's the UFC, that's the big one. Or are you open to like, you know, maybe those possibilities if things presented themselves, let's say the PFL open a strawweight division and a million dollars is never a bad thing. Or like one championship, if they called you and go overseas, you know, that'd be cool. They're doing their tournament right now as well. Do you think about those things or is it strictly like, 
UFC is kind of the spot for me, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty open. Uh, I'm an opportunity based. So if, if somebody, you know, presents like opportunity that I couldn't say no to, I for sure would be interested. Uh, I've always had my eye on the UFC because they have the highest level of athletes. And my goal has always been to fight the very best. And so that's why, you know, for me, my, my end goal would be to be there. But, you know, if, if along the way I get a cool opportunity to go overseas or to do something, you know, you know, a million dollar tournament, I definitely would consider it. Uh, I've always said since being with Invicta, you know, I, I didn't join them to like ship off to the UFC as quickly right. as possible. I do want to enjoy my time because I did a lot of growing up with Invicta and Shannon and, and um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be the champ with Invicta and, and I wouldn't mind having another fight or two, but I'm not going to rush going to the UFC or I'm not going to do anything like that, but I do eventually want to be in the division where I'm fighting the very best 115ers in the world. Yeah. And I think it's important not to rush. We see kind of a lot of situations too, where maybe it's not by the fighter's choices, but you know, the UFC maybe pulls them up a little bit too early sometimes, which it's kind of frustrating to watch as, you know, a spectator, but is what it is. Um, and, you, you know, like um, the strawweight division's depth, too. I'm sure that's exciting for you just to see how there's so, so many talented fighters right now in the division. Is that, ex that ex surely excites you, too? Yeah, it's exciting. And it's funny because I fought a few of them and I've trained with a bunch of them. And, and so that's how I know, like, I belong there and, and I'll get there. But I definitely enjoy watching. Like, I won't miss a strawweight fight. You won't, you, won't, <laughs> you won't see me missing any of those fights. I've seen them all. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's funny, you know, we mentioned the other organizations and all that, but it's easy to forget, you know, that you're still quite young, Emily. And hey, who knows, maybe you'll get around to all these places and have one hell of a right. you know, journey exploring Career, the world. Yeah. <laughs> so, is, is there yeah, one? I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah. yeah. Is, there a, is there a country though or something like, are you like to travel much? Is, would you be, are you hoping to do a lot of traveling in your life? I, yeah, I haven't done, you know, anything recently, but um, tough. <laughs> I would love, I would love to, once everything opens back up to get traveling and, and, you know, it'd be cool to fight somewhere else. I haven't done that. Like I fought in different States, but international fight, um, like you said, like one championship, like how cool are their shows? Like I'd like to watch those live. That'd be awesome. So yeah, I do want to travel. Of course. I know I'm dying to get back around the world. It's been tough this last yeah. two years or so, but, uh, <laughs> outside of MMA, Emily, uh, you know, do you have any hobbies or like things that you like to do that, you know, kind of maybe decompress, take the mind off of all the stresses that come with MMA, anything like that? Yeah. Um, I don't do a whole lot out of the gym. That's, you know, my life pretty much revolves around that, but other than the gym, you know, I do a lot of, a lot of dog related things, I've got a lot of dogs myself. Um, I'm really, really uh, passionate about like dog rescue. And so, you know, I try my best to like right now I'm doing a fundraiser for, for a couple of dogs. I was going to mention that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's that type of stuff. And then, you know, later on down the line, um, I'd love to do some dog business things, but for right now, you know, a lot of dog training and a lot of, you know, raffling here and there when I can raise money and, a lot of sharing dogs. You know, I'm trying to convince everyone I know to adopt a dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you're doing this this raffle, right? Which is kind of raising the awareness a bit. And uh, what is it, two days? Is that when you announced the thing? Tell me a little bit yep. of the details of this. Yeah, so I'm raffling off my fight outfit for my Invicta mm -hmm. title fight. Um, it's over on Wednesday. And basically $10 a ticket. You could buy as many tickets as you want. Um, it goes the full money raised, everything, 100% goes to two dog rescues here in Oklahoma. One of them I've adopted two dogs from, so it's like very, very special to me. And the other one um, is a friend of mine that started a rescue for blind and deaf dogs, which is also, I feel like, very cool. So um, all the money's going to them. I'm trying to raise as much as possible. I did it last year, so I'm trying to eat that. And I'm pretty sure I will this time, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, very good cause. And how many dogs? How many dogs are we talking, Emily? How many you got? <laughs> yeah, I've got six rescues. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a wild house in here, but I mean, it's worth it. I love them. They're all wild. Yeah, that's a little family you got. So very cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you think? And this is always a tough question. I'm aware, but you know, what do you think that you would be doing if you never got into MA? Is it something with dogs likely, or 
who knows? Yeah, that, I have a really hard time with that. Um, I can't picture anything, honestly. And, you know, now with where I am, I would say something dog related, but if I had never got into MMA, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I've never been happy working like a job job. I've had to do it before, you know, to support myself. And, and I was able to, at some point, you know, I teach a lot of pr private classes and I do dog, you know, stuff. And so I would, I would like to say dog stuff, but I hope that never has to happen right. you know, for a long time. Hypothetical. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, always a tough one, but I like to spring it on you guys. So uh, thank you for participating. But uh, <laughs> all right, Emily, sure. with, with that in mind, I'll leave you with one last thing. It's been great. Thank you so much. Um, ideally, you know, whether it is for your first title defense or let's say UFC calls you up, whatever happens next, uh, ideally, when would you like it to be? I would like to fight before the end of the year. So if that's late November, December, um, you know, honestly, December sounds pretty good to me, but December. Yeah, there you um, go. It'll be a Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. And I know MMA, the shows kind of slow down around December, January, but I would love to get on a card if it's early. I don't care. Um, I, before this fight, it was like a whole year off and, and that's just not how I like to do it. So, but you know, there was a bunch of circumstances and, and COVID kind of kicked me on my butt a few times with fight cancellation. So um, ideally December, you know, no later than January for sure. Yeah, that would be great to you know see if you can make that happen. And that actually brought another question to my mind. So I got one more for you, actually. But, you know, I'm sure you've been paying attention or at least heard that uh, the Adam Wade champ, uh, Alicia Zapatella, has been pretty vocal about wanting to double champ. Um, and, you know, she still kind of has uh, Jessica Delboni to worry about, I would say. But what do you think about that potential of being a part of what would be that would be the first Invicta champ versus champ fight, right? And, you know, you'd be defending, obviously, not going down. But are you open to that if she was to come up? If Shannon offered that, yes. I learned a long time ago, you know, there's too many opponents that if you are worried about everyone, there's too much going on. So I strictly stay one person, one opponent at a time. I don't call anybody out. I wait for Shannon or whoever to message me about it. So if Shannon messaged me, I am 100% down with that. All right. Well, yeah, we'll see what happens. As I said, I think she's got <laughs> some other challengers to worry about first, but uh, right. then, I agree. So uh, yeah, we'll see. But all right, Emily, we can leave it off there. Uh, thanks so much for the time. It was really great getting to talk to you for the first time and a very fun fighter to watch. Congratulations on the title and one hell of a knockout. I mean, goodness, that was incredible stuff. And that picture, I'm going to, I'm going to frame that myself. I want that on my own wall. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you, <laughs> Emily. So uh Hope you have a great rest of your Monday. Thank you so much for the time and you know, best of luck with everything going forward. I wish you, wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Oh, hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, we'll see you next time.